A wife's goal. You ready for this one? Uh, a few weeks ago, we talked about the husband's goal. And there were so many happy wives afterwards. <laughs> there was buzz and women were talking. My wife was angry. Just kidding. And, and actually, I forgot, so another request, request actually immediately came in um, for the wife's role. And I won't say who it is, but maybe their name rhymes with Rod. And, um, and then another sister asked for this as well. And we've got two or three more requests after this. I love that. I love it. So sisters, let me say something, if I may. Um, a few weeks ago, I took the gloves off, and it's easier to do that as a husband whenever I'm talking to my fellow brothers. I took the gloves off, and I think the brothers were appreciative of that, and the women were appreciative of that. And it's awkward, right, as a male, talking to your sisters about their role, but I got to tell you, I'm, I'm going to take the gloves off again. And the reality is, I, I think you would want me to, right? Um, I think you'd like me to. This isn't complicated in the sense of where we're going to go in the scriptures. I'm a big principle guy. We're going to go back to some of the same passages we looked at when we looked at the husband's goal. And I'd like to go ahead and jump straight into this with Ephesians chapter 5. Here it is. You've heard this. Who... How, just think about how many times you've heard this throughout your life. It's interesting, though, what you see. <laughs> Do you see it anymore? Or have you got it? Have you mastered it? Let's see. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. He'll now talk about the husband's role, and as he brings it to a conclusion, at least that portion, Paul says, however, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. So first of all, just some observations and reasons for your role. Of course, I can't tell you why did he begin with wives. Maybe there's no reason to that. In my mind, if I were writing that, I would, have, I would have started with the husbands and then wives and then children. It kind of makes sense from the order. And, but one thing, whether he meant for it to or not, I can tell you this much. This thing does not work. This thing does not work as it should if the wife does not submit and respect her husband. Observation number two. The common denominators in the marriage passages are this. Husbands are to love their wives and sacrifice for her. Correct? That's the big takeaway. It's not complicated. Women are to submit and respect. Why? Well, imagine this. You're a woman and your role is that you have to submit and follow and respect a man, how much do you need his focus to be on loving you and understanding you? Now, the flip side of that coin, your role from God is to lead the family to love and to sacrifice for your wife. How much do you need her to respect and follow your lead? Imagine trying to do your role and you're having to fight for your role. It doesn't work. And then submit. Let's not sugarcoat this one. I'm not going to do that with you. Submission is difficult, but not bad. Submission is difficult, but not evil. Jesus submitted his life to the Father. A woman says, 
Submission is difficult. Jesus say, yeah, I know something about that. It cost me my life. What does it cost you? Uh, talking about sub- submission in a negative way, we don't think about this, but implies that God's design is flawed. So here's the deal, sisters. I'm not going to apologize to you this morning about your role. Not going to do it. I'm not going to apologize to you about Jesus' role of submission either. And here's another thing. I submit. My kids submit. You submit. Slaves submitted. Masters submitted. Give me a person, they submit. You're not unique. You're not unique. I told you, I'm taking the gloves off this morning. Can I say something else? In the garden... In the garden, Eve ends up being led astray and was deceived. God gets on to Adam and says, because you what? Because you let her lead, this is going to be you. And then with Eve, before he gets to Adam, says, here's the thing. Childbearing is going to be difficult. And here's the other thing. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he will rule over you. You try to take the lead, this is the result, and I'm doubling down on this. Now, what I don't believe is that God didn't have in mind for a woman to submit. I believe from the beginning God created Adam, and then he created Eve, and she is a helper. But I believe that there is another tone of this. In Genesis chapter 3, where he is doubling down. So here's the thing. Sisters, you know me. You know I love you. You know we all love you. You know we value you. It's funny. I was looking through. I rarely do this. I was looking through sermon outlines. On my Bible software, I have access to any minister who uses this software. They can put their outlines on this. And I began to go through them. I was curious. I rarely do this. The good thing is that they're all about the same, which is actually good. That means they're not trying to complicate this. But the funny thing is that some of these guys were trying to pull off of nuances of the word in first century culture, trying to make submission what it is not. Let me tell you, it's beautiful, but difficult. Okay? And I say that to honor you. And ultimately, sisters, it is as to the Lord. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. It is wonderful when your husband is wonderful, but the concept is not following your husband when it's easy to follow them or because you like to follow them. The reality is your goal is to see past your husband and to see your true husband, Christ, because now comes our second passage It isn't always easy. For example, now I think that the context of most of of these passages, like 1 Peter 3 or 1 Corinthians 7, is that we're dealing with people that converted, if you will, to Christianity, but, but both parties weren't committed. So, in other words, a wife says, I believe that Jesus is the Messiah. She's a Christ follower. The husband says, yeah, I'm not buying this. Okay? But the bottom line is, however which way we get there, you may find yourself married to a spouse, women, who is not a believer, or here's the other thing, someone that is a believer, but they're not acting like a believer. Does that ever happen in the body? You know what happens. Let's look at this. Likewise, wives, be subject to your own husbands, so that even if some do not obey the word, they may be won without a word by the conduct of their wives. When they see your respectful and pure conduct, do not let your adorning be external, the braiding of hair and the putting on of gold jewelry or the clothing you wear, but let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight, see, this is who really you want validation from, which in God's sight, God who is looking at you, 
says, oh, this is very precious. For this is how the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves by submitting to their own husbands as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. And you are her children if you do good and do not fear anything that is frightening. Sisters, not all husbands are helpful, are they? I want to commend you because in your role as helper, this requires a tremendous amount, and hear me, of patience and maturity. A lot of patience and maturity. What I want you to see, and it's not that you haven't heard it before, but there's something bigger going on than you. Your behavior as a wife says a lot about your faith in Jesus. I do not believe that a woman can lack in submission and respect and turn around and say she loves Jesus the way she should. I do not believe that you can hate your brother, and in this case it may be your husband, and say you love God. Would you agree with that? Okay. So this says more about you than it does them. <laughs> Would you allow that to seek in for a moment? I'm not trying to make you mad. <laughs> I'm trying to challenge you this morning. Whenever you look at Jesus, what kind of people did he serve? <laughs> did he serve people that appreciated him? Did he serve people that were kind to him? Jesus was the helper, right? By the way, do you know that God is presented in the scripture as the helper? Jesus is the helper. The Holy Spirit, Jesus calls him the helper. Yet whenever we look at them and we're, whenever we're considering ourselves, we don't look at their role and go, how embarrassing. We say, wow, how good is Jesus? Ultimately, it is showcasing, showcasing Jesus' love. Do you remember in Romans chapter 5, whenever it talks about the reconciliation that we have in Jesus, and that it, it describes mankind, do you remember some of the terms that it uses to describe us? We were ungodly, right? We were sinners. Do you know that it even calls us enemies? But it is in this state that God, that is Jesus, died for us. Amen? Amen. Now, let me tell you something that is just ear candy to you. Here's something that you love to hear a gospel preacher tell people. Do you know that Jesus didn't ask you to clean himself up before he could love you? Y'all like that, don't you? Do you know that Jesus didn't say, you have to be good enough for me to die for you? And all of a sudden, some sister just starts humming Amazing Grace. She loves that. I can hear it right now. Preach it. But then I turn the tables and I go, and wives, do you know that your husband doesn't have to clean himself up before you love him? And all of a sudden, the Amazing Grace just kind of fades off. And we got to... He doesn't have to be everything you want him to be for you to respect him. And you guys are like, what time, what time is it? How, how long has it been going? Um, sisters, it's not all right for Jesus to have to do that thing. And by the way, the very thing that we love him for, and then for some reason, whenever it comes to you, you're too good for that. I love you, but here's the thing. You're not too good. The beautiful thing about your role is that you're showcasing the love 
of Jesus. It is a powerful, powerful thing whenever Jesus was treated poorly again and again and again, and Jesus kept loving, loving, and loving on people. And let me just say something practically. While this is not a given, this woman may not make a man come to the Lord, but I'll tell you one thing, generally speaking, he will at least respect her. Would you agree with that? It is an odd day whenever a husband is loving a wife and sacrificing for her again and again that she doesn't love and respect him. But here's the flip side of that. It's not normal for a wife that's actually behaving the way she's supposed to behave, respecting her husband, submitting to her husband, even when her husband does wrong. She does it again and again that it does not touch the heart of that husband. And he goes, you know what? Man, even whenever I'm not doing right, she continues to love me. That is Jesus in action. Sisters, you've got to ask yourself a question. If my marriage is not what I want it to be, am I behaving appropriately? Titus chapter 2, Rod brought this up. Uh, the, Titus chapter 2, that is 1 through 6. Not, not um, zeroing in on, on the uh, older women in particular, but it was a principle. I think this principle is true of men as well, but Paul's making a point to Titus. Older women likewise are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good and so train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind, and submissive to their own husbands. And of course, here's the thing, that the word of God may not be reviled. We, we are in a cultural battle today. For some guys, having to read that in front of their congregation is super awkward for them. If I would skip over some of these things as far as what the older women are to train the younger women, what are some of the words do you think I would skip over today? You're like, all of it. <laughs> do I have to pick one? First of all, don't tell a woman to be self-controlled. You don't tell me nothing. Pure, mm, working at home, what is this? Is this the 19, what, finish it. Is this the 1950s, 60s? No, it's first century. <laughs> and it's still valid. Kind, submissive to their own husbands. So let, let, here, here's the thing. Older women, we need you. Paul would talk about marriage, and the guy wasn't even married. So I realized, no, it's okay for me to talk about this. There's nothing wrong about me talking about this. I'm to preach the word in and out of season. I don't have to be a female to talk about this. But you think that something doesn't go over my head? Well, I know that you need older women. There are things that an older woman needs to say to younger women because I can't and I shouldn't be able to get through to you like they can. Why? Because they've been where you're at for a long time and they know what they are talking about. Now, not all older women. So as Rod said also, be careful the older women that you ask. And I'm also not afraid to say that. But we need older women teaching younger women what is up. <laughs> We need them telling younger women, you actually do need help and how to love. Now, think about how personal you are with your own family. But an older woman is supposed to get in your business and teach you how to love. No, you teach me how to love my husband, how to love your husband. Don't think you can teach me how to love your kids and how to love your children. Because we can struggle with this. Older sisters, I'm going to say this and then move on. How badly do they need this? This isn't something that is applicable to them from time to time. This is a role that is applicable to them majority of the time. Amen? That's how important this is. Kindness goes along way. 
I wanted to point this one out in particular. Brothers and sisters, we got to stop with the brutal words, brutal attitudes, unkind thoughts. It's got to stop now. It's not in just what you say, it's in how you say it. And that goes for brothers, and that goes for sisters as well. It is inappropriate in the home. May I remind you that Paul even instructs instructs slaves to their masters, and marriage is no master-slave relationship. Hear my point. If slaves are to be submissive in everything, not to be argumentative, not to do so according to eye service, but sincerely, if a slave is called to be that way to their master, how much the helper to her husband. We have a cultural shift. Listen, I know we can go too far whenever Paul and Peter talk about the quality of a woman, a quiet and gentle spirit. We, we feel like we got to explain that. Sometimes we got to feel like we explain that because we have loud mouth wives. Sorry, just said it. Sometimes we have to explain this because we have women that don't know how to be kind and submissive and we don't want to offend them. I need to tell you something. It's not wrong on having a wife that's funny. It's not wrong about some center of attention. I'm not saying that. But there are women that, need, that should have been told by older women, shh. I'm like, I'm just, I don't know if I'm going to preach next week. I don't know if you guys are going to have me. The women last week were smiling. Y'all are like looking real serious right now. I told you, I'm taking the gloves off because I'm going to tell you the flip side of this. You got a husband in a home that's trying his best and has a wife that's not submissive and respectful. He's drowning and he needs someone to say something. This is not the form. Wives, don't use all your kindness and your loving attitudes and thoughts on people that don't live with you full time, people that aren't committed to you full time, people that didn't raise children with you, people that are not committed to you. That's not fair. We cannot be in our homes waiting to see who will cave first. That's not the way we learned Christ. Christ took the initiative. Amen? He wasn't just loving to a people that were enemies. He was kind to a people. So consider the impact of your wife. I appreciate you so much. I'm done. I'm done for this morning. Brothers, did I bring the heat? Don't smile too. You're all scared to even move. Is she looking at me? Yes, she's looking at you. You know, I feel comfortable saying these things because I trust in two things. I trust, number one, that you know I love and respect you. I, I, I trust that you know me and where I'm coming from. And I also trust that you love and respect the Lord and me. You actually give me the ability to be just, <clears throat> just get to it. Thank you for that. Let me dote on my wife. I used not to like this, actually. I'm a big hypocrite now. I didn't like it whenever guys would do this or elders would do this from the pulpit. I'm like, quit talking about your life. No one cares. And here I am, big hypocrite. <laughs> and I'm not going to cry either. <laughs> no one can build me up more than Jordan. And no one could break me down faster than Jordan. Don't tell me her role isn't significant. Jordan could fly me to the heavens, and Jordan could bury me six feet deep if she wanted to. I love you, and I do actually care about what y'all think. I do care about the impact. I do care about this, but not near as much as her. 
And I got to tell you, I've been through things with her. And if I did not help her, if I did not have her help, I, I, am, I am afraid to answer the question if my faith alone would have been enough. I would like to say it would have been enough, but I don't know. I got a sister-in-law who's gone through the worst things that you can imagine. I don't even like to think about what would happen if she were gone. I don't even like to think about it. Do you hear me? This relationship that we have is a blessing from God. It is not a curse. My wife, brothers, is worth all the time and effort. And I would pray that she feels like I'm worth the time and the effort. And I do pray that we are doing this first and foremost for the Lord. But now I'm going to step back a little bit. But I do hope that Jordan does this a little bit because she also likes me. (laughs) (laughs) And I hope that she knows that I do this for her because I love her. My dad, I can't remember if I told you this, but when I was writing my, um, my vows for our wedding, I read it to him. And he says, well, it's, it's very biblical driven and, and it's very accurate. He goes, but maybe just talk about why you like her. <laughs> Don't tell me they're just a helper. Hope this has been an encouragement to you. Talk as couples. Jordan and I, did we not, after these lessons, had to sit down and talk and re- reevaluate and what are some things that we need to do, what do we need? Hey, can I tell you something? Guys also like to be heard. Guys want our wives to know our story. Remember we talked about that with the women? We, they, we want you to know our history. We do want you to know what's going on. We do want you to listen. <laughs> We're not that different than you. Love you all. God bless your marriages. If you need to respond to the gospel, do so right now as together we stand and we sing.